Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, or I should say good morning, depending on when you're viewing this video. I had the opportunity to put up an old sermon for this weekend, and I decided that it is too important, too important to remember and to memorialize on this weekend. So I want to start by saying thank you. I want to start by saying thank you to all those who have served, not only in our military, but also in our civil services, fire department, police. If you have people like this in your family, I am encouraging you to be thankful to them on this weekend, to remember they have given us the ability to relax on this weekend. I want to thank Brett for suggesting this. I know many of you are taking the opportunity to be with family and friends. If you have individuals in your company that have helped us to be able to enjoy the freedoms that we often take for granted, then this is the moment. This is the moment to say thank you. Thank you very much. I'm reminded of David. David is a, a favorite of mine. And he had a good, good friendship with the son of the king, Jonathan. Problem was, Saul didn't like him. Saul knew that he was not the favorite of God. He knew that he had done things that God didn't want him to do. And he had been very arrogant about it. And he knew that David was going to be the next king and not Jonathan. So he tried to do everything he could to cause David to fail. But Jonathan, on the other hand, he wanted David to succeed. He, he appreciated what David was as an individual, and he knew that God had set him up and that that could not be changed. Jonathan reaches out to David and tells him, I'm going to make sure that you're able to get away. It's an interesting situation. It's a new moon feast and David is supposed to be there, but Jonathan makes arrangements so that he, although he will be missed, will be able to test his father to see whether or not his father's intentions are good or evil towards David. He then proceeds out into the field and he executes the sign for the young man uh, to go and fetch the arrows that he was to, that he, well, that he did shoot. And he gave the sign to David that, no, Saul was going to kill him. Saul was after him for sure. And they wept. They were so upset that they knew that this was likely the last time that they would would see each other. And I, I think about the, this moment particularly because it's it's moments like that that are, are forged in difficult times. And here we are, we've come out of the pandemic. Well, we're coming out of the pandemic. And we're remembering. We're remembering the things that have happened during the pandemic. We're remembering that it was coming for all of us and that it didn't like any of us and that some of us have died and some of us have been injured. And all the while we have had friends and family who have stuck close by us. So this, this Memorial Day, I think it would be so appropriate if we would call, send a text, look on Facebook, tell your loved ones, tell the ones that matter to you. Thank you. Thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for being there during these difficult times. 
David and Jonathan had sworn an oath before God. And they would always be friends. It's crazy, the rest of the story. I skip right to the end where Saul and Jonathan were fighting the Amalekites. And it was not looking good. There was a young man who was not an Israelite who came up near to Saul on Mount Gilboa. Saul was in the process of summoning the courage to kill himself. And when he couldn't do that, he asked this young man to do it for him. And not being an Israelite, he obliged. And he killed Saul and he took his, his crown, his armlet, and he ran away and he came to David. And he presented these as trophies in some ways, maybe thinking that he would make David very happy because, of course, David was looked at as Saul's enemy as well. But David's reaction, especially to the, the hearing that his best friend Jonathan had also fallen, was quite astounding. He, he bursts into tears. He starts weeping and wailing. He tears his clothes, as does all the guys with him. They are all crying and weeping at the death of Jonathan and Saul, the Lord's anointed. And then David does something that actually startles me even more. He, he asks the young man what possessed him to go ahead and give in to the desires that Saul had for self-harm and to do it for him and the young man didn't have an answer and David has him killed it's a it's a war thing it's a it's a bloodshed thing it's it's sickening and at the same time it's so poignant that he would feel about Saul, his once father-in-law and mortal enemy, that he would take the man's life who told him that Saul was dead and didn't have much regard for raising up his hand against the Lord's anointed. It is, it is on days like this, it is on weekends like this, where we memorialize those who have had to do things that go unmentioned for generations until they come out and we realize why uncle so-and-so or sister so-and-so was a little strange after they came back from war. It's because they've seen things, they've done things that change them. It is after this that David uh, has his kingdom settled underneath him uh, in the years that he was in Hebron, people came there to either be with him or not be with him. And then finally, the elders of Israel came to him and anointed him king over Israel as well as Judah. And this, the, the kingdom was consolidated. And then David does something that I think we should take special note of. He takes the, the son of Jonathan crippled man named Mephibosheth and he brings him into his court. Now a man is very scared. He knows that David is king now and he's probably going to get rid of everybody in Saul's family so that no one has the chance to take his kingdom away from him. But he didn't know about the promise that he had made to Jonathan that they would take care of each other's families, that they would be friends forever. And David surprises him and says, you're going to eat at my table for the rest of your life. You're going to be part of this, this court. Now, it seems Mephibosheth had a number of sons and daughters, had quite a big family. 
So this was a huge, huge offer and a huge request that David makes of, Meph of Mephibosheth. And then he asks Ziba, Saul's servant, to restore to Mephibosheth all of Saul's lands. This is, this is incredible, but this is done all because David, David is going to keep his promise to his friend Jonathan. He keeps his promise into the next generations. This is the kind of thought that we can have on this Memorial Day weekend. That we have made promises too to friends and to family, to spouses. And this is the opportunity to remember those and to memorialize them maybe by saying thank you or maybe just a hug. It's kind of strange to say that, but throughout COVID now, we've not been able to hug each other as much. Maybe if the two parties are okay with it, we can let people know that we, we love them and appreciate them and appreciate the promises that we have made to each other. Because we don't know the future. David had been told by God that he would be given the kingdom and that his family would rule over Israel. He did not know that many generations later, the one, the one, Jesus himself, would come from Bethlehem and would be the son of David, that everyone was shouting about just before his death. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the son of David. David was the kind of man who kept his promises. David was the kind of man who memorialized his promises in his actions. I'm suggesting today on this Memorial Day weekend that we can be the same kind of people. We can follow in David's footsteps. We can follow in Jesus' footsteps, the son of David, and we can memorialize the promises that we have made to our God, to our family, to our country, and we can be the kind of people that others can trust and take care of. I'm thankful to you as a congregation and to many of you who have become great friends, thankful for the commitments that you have kept through this time in COVID. And as we look forward to the opportunity of using more of our property again in gathering together and or meeting with each other in various places this summer, I'm hopeful that we will have many more memories that we can tuck away and uh, memorialize next year. God bless you. God keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Happy Sabbath.